Welcome back to Fable 2, and this is the second part of the Psychology and Sociology video lecture. Um, and what I'm going to try to show here in Fable 2 is the way that a video game like the Iliad and like the Odyssey can propose a psychology in its interactive nature. Um, remember how I talked about the psychology of Hector, the psychology of Odysseus, um, in the way that the bards compose those characters uh, through the relationship that exists in the bardic occasion between the bard and the audience. Well, what I want to show is that in that very same interactivity, it's possible, and I think once you see this, you'll see this happening all over in games, although it's, uh, I think, very emphatic in Fable, um, you'll see that the interactivity itself can propose a way of looking at human psychology. And the best way in, I think, is to think about how a player character, like the hero that you embody in Fable, how a player character relates to other people. Almost always these are non-player characters within the world, and what that says about um, the game and the player's own idea about what it is to be human and what makes a person human or even humane what it's good for a person to be like, which is really just the most basic question of psychology and of sociology. Psychology having to do just with the individual, sociology having to do with the extension of that individual into a community. So here we go. What I'm going to show is uh, my player character interacting in a very characteristic fable way with other people, that is, non-player characters in the fable world of Albion. So I walk up, I talk to her, Sally the housewife, and I show her what I can do. Look, I can dance. Oh, and I did the little mini game there very well, which means that she's going to like me a lot. Look, if I do it again, or I do this other expression, uh-oh, I'm not sure she likes this. Oh, she doesn't like that. I have to do something nice. Let me try again. Thumbs up for her. Oh, look, and here's somebody else. The town crier. Uh, the town crier, what does he like? Well, you know what? I can figure it out. He likes appearance. Um, he likes the Bloodstone Mansion, he, uh, Hobbs Water. If I gave him some Hobbs Water, he would think favorably of me. But it doesn't say anything about his emotes. Oh, here we go. Aggressive, gay, raunchy, and randy. So um, I could um, do things based on Nobody his ideas. Let me see. Okay, playing a little mini game here. I'm showing him my strength. Uh-oh, I made a mistake. Ooh, let's try a different expression. All right. Oh, he likes me a lot now. Ooh, gonna whistle now. You can see the hearts floating up show that everybody likes me. Now, the most basic idea here is obviously that I can affect people's opinion of me in this world. And it does have an impact. It's not just a kind of random thing. As you go across the world, people do come up to you and react to you according to how they feel about you. Now, what kind of psychology does that propose? Well, what it really does, I think, is to make you question. Remember, you're the bard in this scenario. It makes you question what kind of psychology you want to enact, both in the world of Albion and in the kind of broader world, uh, the real world that we all live in. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of the main parts of the story and try to show you how I think that psychological aspect of the game, that sociological aspect of the game, interacts with the actual storytelling of the main story, the, the big quest that's at the heart of Fable 2, uh, which is, of course, similar to the quests that are at the heart of many other games, both single-player and massively multiplayer. Okay, I'm about to run into Bloodstone Mansion to see if I can find somebody named Reaver, who is apparently the hero of skill I need to find. Well, 
Hello there. Always a nice surprise to have company. I don't get many visitors to my little coastal paradise. Especially ones who might well redefine a man's concept of paradise. <laughs> you little minx. Notice I just Unlike gave a little emote to him. Make it through Wraith Marsh. They're lost, confused, scared. But not you. You are looking for someone. And if you're looking for someone in Bloodstone, let's be honest, you're looking for me. But I'm afraid I hate wasting time on nobodies. That's you. Tell you what, why don't you go out and rescue some travellers, or slay some beasts, or slay some travellers? The details are unimportant. But prove to me that you're worth dealing with, and you'll have my full attention. That's it. Scoot. Off you go. Vamos. Give aid. Allez, vous en. I need to earn 12,001 more renown if I want to speak to this guy. Now, this is a mechanic that runs all the way through Fable 2, and I think it's absolutely essential uh, not only to its narrative aspects, but also to its psychological and sociological aspects, because renown in this game is measured in terms of how you appear to other people. And most importantly, as you gain more renown, more people will pay attention to you and come up to you, and then the aspect of how many uh, funny things you did for them, which includes farting, as you'll hear in the interview with Peter Molyneux that I did uh, over the winter. Um, that aspect of people paying attention to you and them, these fake people, having an impact on your experience of the game is where I think the psychology of Fable lies. And what I think is wonderful about it as a way of asking a, the question, how does the psychology or the sociology of an interactive medium like Ancient Epic or video game work? I think the wonderful thing about it is it makes you decide how that psychology is going to affect you, how it's going to affect your gameplay. One of the things, like he said, as you, that you can do is actually kill those NPCs who are coming up to you. And the question of whether you're going to do that, how you're going to play the psychology, is the thing that in the end is going to have the greatest impact on how the psychology of the game works for you. That is, as the power was the bards, to change up the psychology of Achilles or Hector or Odysseus. The power is yours to change your own view of the psychology, to try out things. And that's going to lead us on directly into our anti-heroism uh, module, which is coming up next.